CTV's W5 presents a special documentary presentation. Curling, it can be a game of inches. It's a game where one shot can make or break a dream. This was our dream together, the four of us. And we wanted to go on for as, us as much as to complete the goal that we made with Sandra. This is the story of four women whose passion and love of the game took them to the top of the world. Marcia Gooderwright, the quiet and dependable lead. Joan McCusker, vibrant, spirited, inspirational. Jan Betker, consistent, steady, and intense. And their skip, Sandra Schmerler, rock solid shot maker, motivator, and team leader. In a five year period, this team captured three national and world titles. And in 1998, they claimed the biggest prize of all, Olympic gold. For a game Scotland claims to have invented in the 1500s, curling in Canada has evolved to become a near obsession during the endless, cold prairie winters. It's not an easy sport to master. Only twice in curling history has one team dominated all others throughout the world. In the late 1950s, the Richardson team from Saskatchewan and their hard-hitting takeout game shocked the curling purists from Scotland. Their bold approach won them four world championships in five years and changed the style of the game. The public adored them, and they were proclaimed national heroes. It would be more than 30 years before a second team would dominate the world curling scene. Sandra Schmerler grew up in the community of Bigger, Saskatchewan. She won the high school provincial championship in 1981, but that was just the beginning. No matter who was on her team, Sandra always expected the most. She was always tough to curl with, though. She felt you shouldn't miss. She didn't miss very much, and you shouldn't miss very much. So she was tough even then to curl with. <laughs> Regina curler Jan Betker had just faced a difficult loss. It forced her to focus on the precision of her game. So we won the city championship one year and went to uh, provincials. I think we won one game. It was just a humiliating experience. I was just devastated. It was awful. Um, but I kept at it for some reason. I don't know why. But. In the village of Salcoats, Joan Inglis discovered that throwing her curling broom didn't help her game. She began to learn the importance of team spirit. I can't remember taking the game so seriously that, um, that I would quit until I got to grade 12, when I, when I really wanted to win badly. And in the northern community of Hudson Bay, Marcia Schimmel discovered in herself a deep competitive streak that could not be suppressed. I think I always had that real desire to, to succeed and real desire to win at, at any cost, just about, you know. And so I think that's always been in me. And I think um, a lot of those stories, you know, I know when Sandra, Jan, and Joan and myself got together, um, everyone had a story like that, you know, that that's, you know, that's kind of came out in, in them as they were growing up. In the mid-1980s, the roots of what would become Team Schmerler took hold. In 1985, Sandra found a job in Regina and joined Kathy Fulman's team playing third. This was when she first met Jan Betker and the two became best friends. Sandra also found romance, and in the summer of 1987, she married Del Peterson, whom she had met at work. 
For Sandra, life was good. On the ice, the team experienced some success, including a provincial championship and a trip to the Scott Tournament of Hearts. But by the end of the decade, changes were in store for Sandra and Jan. We just found it really frustrating. And I said to her one day, you know, I think we can do this on our own. Why don't we form our own team? And either you skip or I skip, doesn't really matter. You know, Sandra will skip, I'll play third, and we'll pick up a front end. They called several people, among them Joan McCusker, who had filled in as a lead for them one year. Joan and her husband Brian had also played with Sandra on a championship mixed team. I had a lot of experience with Jan and Sandra up until that point. There were some sides that we had, we had some apprehension about. Marcy and I said, well, they're good players. They're very good players. They can be very negative. And we waited about a week or a week and a half and um, things, uh, you know, one of the people that we asked turned us down and so we decided, well, you know, maybe Sandra and Jan are our best options. The 1990 season saw Team Peterson emerge onto the Saskatchewan curling scene. I don't think very many teams in Saskatchewan would have thought that that team was going to be very good. There were a lot of doubts about Sandra's ability to play skip. She'd become stereotyped as a third. Our expectations were a lot higher than Joan and Marcy's. We'd go to a spiel thinking, yeah, we should be qualifying, and if we did qualify, yeah, we, you know, we think we should be winning some games along the way. And their expectation was not at all like that. You know, we were more interested in having fun and um, socializing. And, you know, if, if we won a few games and, um, and made it to a qualifier, that was, that was good enough for us. Somewhere along the way, we just started playing better and we, we you know, were winning a few games and we were having so much fun. We were just having such a great time, and then we ended up, we won the province that first year. The victory was even sweeter, winning on home ice in their club, the Caledonian, or the Cali as they call it. Team Peterson now advanced to the Canadian Championships, the Scott Tournament of Hearts, to be held up the road in Saskatoon. For added support and experience, they recruited veteran curler Anita Ford as a backup. You could tell where they were because you could hear them laughing. They were excited, they were happy, and they were within themselves, you know, and, uh, and that's how they got relaxed before the game. They, they just cracked jokes and, and laugh, and, and, and if you were outside of them and didn't know them, I think everybody else probably thought, Ooh, gee, are they ever loud or whatever, you know? But I, that, that was just the way they were. On the ice, it was all business, and they swept to a fourth place finish, an encouraging sign for the first year team. The allure of high stakes curling had seized the girls and refused to let go. In 1992, Marcia married her boyfriend, competitive curler Carrie Gooderwright, and Joan's first baby, Rory, was born. But motherhood became a strain on her game. I laid in bed feeling completely overwhelmed and crying and saying to my husband, I can't do this. I got to quit. I can't keep leaving this, this child. And it felt like I was going all the time. And you know, when I look back, it wasn't that bad. It's just I, ma I made it very hard on myself. Sandra's life was also changing. Her brief marriage to Del Peterson crumbled, and they went their separate ways. She took the breakup hard. To compensate, she immersed herself completely in her sport, studying game after game. Her efforts paid off, winning another provincial title and a trip to the 1993 Scott Tournament of Hearts. We just got on an incredible roll in 93. I remember sitting down with Sandra and saying, you know, I can see us wearing red and white. And her joke was, you know, red and white, and it wasn't Kentucky Fried Chicken, that we weren't going to be working at Kentucky Fried Chicken. You know, we, want, we were going to represent our country at, at the Worlds. She needs a slight roll into the rings. She's got a good-looking shot. She's got it. She's going to get the roll. She is. Sandra Peterson with her final stone on the extra end. Wayne's the 19. Canadian Women's Curling Championship.
Russia. Well, I think the humor and the, the, the friendship that we have with this team is incredible, and I'm just so proud of them. They just played so great ahead of me. I just can't believe it. Well, I can remember standing on the podium and had no idea where the worlds were and when they announced that, you know, and this team will be going on to represent our country in Geneva, Switzerland. And I can remember just, just about breaking that, like I was just, I just couldn't believe it. In 91, they were like four individuals, two, uh, two groups of two. And uh, then as they went along in 92, they, they were getting closer. And by the time they won the Canadian Championship in 93, they were um, just like, like one. Traveling overseas for the first time as Team Canada, expectations were high for the four happy-go-lucky girls from Saskatchewan. To add to the pressure, they were on international ice and faced the new four rock rule that led to higher scores and required a change in style from the knockout game of the prairies. I must admit there was some trepidation because they came from Saskatchewan and Saskatchewan teams are usually more of a hitting team and when you play the four rock rule you need to have you need to change your plan so that you are ready to play a more aggressive game. You know, our first game, for instance, that year, we played uh, Doherty Nordby, and she'd been two-time world champ. And it's so important to get off to a good start, you know, just for your own psychological reasons. We were scared spitless. Jan Becker. Yep. Those girls played the most aggressive game, and they thumped Norway in six ends. It was just an, like an announcement to the world. We are here, and we are ready. And you just realize how much preparation those girls went through to get themselves ready for that. The preparation paid off. In the final game against Germany, Sandra's strategy was simple. Keep the house clean and run the opposition out of rocks. And the game is over. It's yeah. over. The dream season. When I think about winning that first world, I think about all the obstacles that we overcame. It was a very, very sweet victory because in our minds, we were not the favorite. And here it is. It just makes you feel really fulfilled, like you had a goal and you achieved it and you just felt great for, for achieving it. You know, it's just very um, gratifying. The girls returned home to a hero's welcome and the distinction of only the second Saskatchewan team to win a world title. That year would bring a lot of attention to the team and some special attention to Sandra. I knew Marcy. Marcy and I went to uh, school together. Marcy and I were talking upstairs after and uh, about many things and one of the topics came up was about myself uh, meeting Sandra. If there was a possibility and I believe uh, uh, she, was, she was up to meeting me and uh, and the rest is history after that. We, we talked for a bit and played some shuffleboard. And uh, yeah, it was, it was just a nice meeting. Nice, uh, it, was, it was nice, we had a nice talk that night. Shannon and Sandra soon became inseparable. In the spring of 94, the girls as Team Canada received an automatic berth into the Scott Tournament of Hearts. Many claim that the toughest thing in sports is not winning a championship, but doing it again. Looks like Team Canada's got their two enough to win the game. Set up. Wait to blow. Just for wait. We played really, really well. We had a lot of fun together. We were, we were having great fun. I mean, we were on top of the world, right? Um, and we just were almost unbeatable. We were just on a, on a mission. We were in the zone. That year, the team would once again advance to the final game. And in the final end, the team would throw eight perfect rocks. Sandra's final shot was a wide open takeout. She's got it. Yes, she's oh, got it. And she scores three. Sandra Peterson with the final stone, a beautifully executed shot to score three. 
And Team Canada has defended the championship they won last year in Brandon. It's very almost unheard of up until that point to have uh, a team from Canada repeat the next year because uh, it's so difficult to get out of Canada and to be able to get to the Worlds is just something else. <laughs> we really hope you win again. <laughs> so that we can have a chance to increase our domestic skills even further. Good luck. You know, lots of curling teams say that they're going to do things together, and they, they do some things together, but there aren't very many that become best friends. Um, some try, but, yeah, I mean, you can't just do that. You can't just form a team and say, okay, we're going to be best friends as well as, as curl together. But I, I think that was an important part of their success, for sure, but I don't think they set out to do that. I think that just happened. At the 1994 Worlds in Oberstdorf, Germany, the girls were less nervous. They were intent on doing what no Canadian women's team had done before. When you first do it, it's sort of a, wow, isn't this great, we did this. But when you go back, you go back with a different attitude and you know you can do it and you want to do it again. And I think that was what was so great in, in Sandra's team, was that they were not only more confident, but that drive was still there. Fast path here, though. Will that stay in the rings? No! And that is it. I, I'm not even going to ask you, okay, how, how about a three-peat? Well, we have a lot of games to play, and how about the summertime? <laughs> We're looking forward to the spring and the summer and just getting home and, and relaxing. It's, it's time for a break from curling for sure. Two-time world champions, back to back. What was ahead for these four girls from Saskatchewan? Sports coverage you count on. CKY News. This crib was born in a factory in Richmond, British Columbia. Made by Canadians for Canadians. Walmart and Storecraft have a shared commitment to provide the best quality product to the end consumer. There is nothing that we build here that I would not put one of my children in. Everything that's made at Storecraft is our baby. can start to work on your allergy symptoms in just 20 minutes. So go ahead and enjoy the day. How will you react this allergy season? React fast. Reactin. There's an exotic twist to herbal essences. Fruit fusions, shampoos, and conditioners. A fusion of fruit extracts so fragrant it takes the organic experience to an even more oh, yes. spectacular yes. place. Oh, yes. I think we've been eating the wrong food. Herbal Essences Fruit Fusions. Perfect. Time for new furniture? Then it's time to save at Dufresne, where you'll find Western Canada's best selection, the best service, and the absolute lowest prices guaranteed. Just what you're looking for in a furniture store. You're at home with Dufresne. When back pain slows you down, Turn to Robaxacent with two active ingredients, one to relieve back pain, the other to relax tense back muscles. It's the brand doctors and pharmacists recommend most. So you can get back into step. Robaxacent, helping you walk away from back pain. Please 
1995, the Scott Tournament of Hearts was held in Calgary, Alberta. All eyes were on the two-time world champions in their quest for a three-peat. It had been a hectic year, and it left them little time to prepare for this championship. Our focus was definitely not on the curling that year. We were concentrating on anything but curling. It was, I look back now and it's, it's so, I get so angry at myself for, for, for behaving like that. But that's only 35. The fact that they had won two worlds in a row, that's what it did to the other teams, is it made them bring their game up to another level to be able to compete with them. And it's uh, kind of interesting, maybe they kind of pushed the rest of the women to curl that much better to, to be able to come out on top. All week long, the matches were tough. The competition to unseat them was unrelenting. The girls were struggling to make it to the semifinal. It was not to be. Sandra's last shot was heavy, giving local favorite Kathy Borst the victory. When you play in these big events, you have to give everything that you have. And I don't know in 95 if I think we only gave half of what we needed to give. It was the humor and the strength of friendship that would help temper the disappointment. We proved ourselves. Like, we didn't do, we weren't a flash in the pan. We did this two years in a row. And the other thing that so we have the respect of about this year is that things weren't going great. <laughs> and here we were in second place. Like, I think we really scrapped it out. And this last game against Alberta was fairly indicative of how the week went. It's yeah. like, just no didn't breaks. get... No, and we didn't oh, make the right shot at the right time. And all of a sudden, oh, we're looking like we're laying three, and then all of a sudden, holy Toledo, they're getting a deuce. <laughs> or four. <laughs> you know what I always wanted to do? I always wanted to do this. <laughs> oh, my God! You know, we're driving to the airport after uh, in Calgary, and I said, well, you know, you guys, I, I have to have another baby. I've been putting this off for couple years I, you know I've got this child that's two and a half over that and I need another baby there would be many changes over the summer Jan married her longtime boyfriend Frank Masira a local high school teacher and football coach they lost out that year we just all of a sudden just decided to let's get married because it was you know we were getting a little bit older and uh, Joan already had Rory and uh, I think the girls were ready to settle down and have a family. Joan's decision to quit curling had an effect on the team. Without her positive support, Sandra struggled with her confidence. Then it was announced that the team could qualify early for a berth in the Olympic trials. So in December of 1995, they reunited for this vital match. Before we went to play in that Olympic playdown against Connie Laliberti, Sandra had completely lost confidence. She said, I'm not going. That's how she started our meeting off two days before we leave for Thunder Bay. I'm not skipping, I'm not going. I can't help you guys. And I'm thinking, I can't skip. I'm thinking, Sandra, you're gonna have to skip. So it was like, you know, what are you, what are you gonna do? I mean, we knew that we couldn't go without her. There, we'd have no chance. And she said, I'll play like crap. And I said, yeah, you play terrible and we lose, and then what will happen? We wake up the next morning, we're all still friends, you know, we go home, and we keep curling. It's just a game. A more confident Sandra led her team to victory and a berth at the Olympic trials. With two years free from competitive rigors, the girls finally had a break in their schedule. At the start, they were just, we were all figuring, well, this is just going to happen for two or three years. But it seemed that they were just as good as they always were going to be. It didn't seem like it was ever going to um, really let up for a few years. And we figured that we weren't getting any younger. So we, um, we figured, well, let's try and do both together, have children and, um, and still keep our curling. It was a window of opportunity, and they each embraced it. In June of 96, Sandra married Shannon England. Anxious to begin a family, they discovered that Sandra needed surgery to help her conceive. 
we didn't have that big a window. If we were going to have a child, it was kind of in that December, January time time frame. Otherwise, anything later was uh, was going to uh, you know conflict with the Olympics. In fact, I think she did suggest that you know no, she's going to wait until after the trials and then try. And we all just you know looked at her and said, Sandra, you have to. This is everything that you want is the ability to get pregnant and to have a baby. So there is no decision, and go. If we have to find somebody, we'll worry about that when the time comes. But, you know, our first concern was with her um, and being able to, to conceive. It worked out. It worked out. A pregnant but rejuvenated Sandra once again led her team to a dominant year winning the provincial and the national Scott Tournament of Hearts. You don't always find players that are, are so much on the same, same life path. We're in the same, I guess, point in our lives, and I think it just makes us grow closer together. At the 97 Worlds in Bern, Switzerland, Team Schmirler was once again on top of the world. As a possible spare for a pregnant Sandra, they recruited a Tina Ford. They never took it for granted, their successes. And that fear inside of them of, of losing or of uh, maybe not being the best they could be pushed them even that much harder to try that much harder. It's there. She knows it. The smile on her face tells the story. Only two months before the Olympic trials, Sandra Schmirler gave birth to a baby girl. She would tell the media, Sarah was her best delivery. We were able to conceive and had Sarah in September 97, so it worked out fine. You know, hey, it has to work around curling, it always does, so. At the Olympic trials in Brandon, the team was focused and very determined. They advanced to the final to meet Shannon Clybrink, a young skip with a hot new team. Before we went to the Olympic trials, we actually um, visualized ourselves playing against the Schmirler team in the final because we looked at the field to see who we thought would be the strongest team, and then we were hoping that we could get there to play them. We were in a bit of a pickle. It was the seventh end. They pretty much had everything guarded out front. They were sitting one pretty much right on the button, and we had one right behind it and right in front of it. Sandra pointed, well, you know, maybe I can use that one. And Jan turned her and said, don't even look at it. Don't even think it. Half is too much, eh? Yeah. Half is too much. What kind of way are you going to throw here? Uh, just normal, I think. I don't even Well, I mean, any shot's possible. If it's there, it's possible, right? And when Sandra went to throw that stone, um, I was nervous, of course, here. But it n never really looks that hard. It doesn't look that hard but of course it is it's like you have to hit it perfect it was a very difficult shot you know you'd call it a Hail Mary shot but uh, you know if it's the only shot you've got and you want to go to the Olympics then it's the one you play I remember Sandra saying that she could see it so vividly when she went down the ice it was like she knew she was gonna make it Sandra came sliding down the ice and I say what do we have here she goes, we have a shot for three. That's all yeah, we got, guys. Exactly right. Uh, the angle's a quarter she, would be good. She has to hit about a quarter of a rock, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, we can get to the red one. I remember my third saying she was pretty sure that she was going to make it, and I was trying to say, oh, no, I don't think so. It's a pretty low percentage shot, and sure enough, was, when she let it go, we knew it was close. We thought, here she goes again. Close, close, close. close. The place just went nuts. It was so loud in there. And I can remember Sandra just, she, she kind of broke down and then she came down the ice and she was hyperventilating. She was so excited. You know, we had to.